gracious Father, this evening we come to you first, Lord, wanting to open our hearts, inviting the Holy Spirit to be present, asking, Lord, that as we look at your word, you will give us understanding. May we see clearly where we are, what's taking place. May our hearts be soft, pliable, that you may lead us, direct us, and that we each one might keep ourselves surrendered to you. For this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. If I'd had the privilege of living in the days of Jesus and had the privilege of being one of his disciples, I would have had some of the same questions that they had. I probably, like they, would have believed, which they did, that he was the Messiah. They not only believed that he was the Messiah, they believed that he was going to set up his kingdom. And they wanted to know when this was going to happen, when these things were going to take place, and I would have wanted to know those things too. So it says that they went to see Jesus and asked him those questions. I'd like for you to read them with me here. This is what it has to say. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? They said, uh, we want to know when these things are going to happen. These things that you've talked about, when, when are these going to take place? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They said, when, when are these things all going to happen? When are they going to take place? Now, Christ understood and knew that in those disciples' minds, they couldn't comprehend anything being beyond the destruction of Jerusalem. To them, the destruction of Jerusalem would have been the end of the world. And so Christ tries to pick it up and help them understand. And he's told them that when Jerusalem is surrounded, that they were to flee. And he told them that there would be just a time, and just as Christ had told them, the Roman general came up and surrounded Jerusalem. And then for no particular reason withdrew his troops. And when he did, Jesus had told them this is what they were to do. Let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay? Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. He said, when that happens, flee. Get out of there. Leave Jerusalem. And that's exactly what the Christians did. Because Christ told them, this will be a very, very difficult time. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter nor on the Sabbath. He told them, be, do this. Get out of there. Flee. Well, that's exactly what happened. And the Roman government, the Roman power, came down, overthrew Jerusalem, and burned the city. Rome ruled. Jesus told them something they were to look for, that they were to be watched for after that. And this is what he said to them. For then there will be great... What? What? Tribulation. It's going to be great tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. He said, after the destruction of Jerusalem, the next thing there's going to be is great tribulation. And Rome turned her fury and her power upon the Christians. They fled. 
And then the scripture begins to pick up and talk about something that was going to take place. And I want you to follow now because I'm going to go through several prophecies with you just quickly to show you how the scripture talks about these things that are going to happen. Notice what it has to say about this time of tribulation because he said after the destruction of Jerusalem, after the Christians fled, then after that time there would be great tribulation. That's what he told him would happen. So watch as it talks about it here. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast. Now this is in Daniel. He's talking about the fourth beast. He wished to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful. Now this fourth beast was terrible, exceedingly dreadful. This in Scripture is pictured as pagan Rome. This was pagan Rome, the fourth, that fourth beast. Now it goes on and says here, Then I wish to know the truth about this fourth beast, which was pagan Rome, and the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up before which three fell. So this particular fourth beast, which was pagan Rome, he said he wanted to know the truth about it, and then he said after that there would be ten horns that would rise, that would come up. And then it says he wanted to know the truth about those ten horns, and particularly the little one that came up before which three of those horns fell. And then he goes on and talks about those ten horns that came up, it says, the ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. Now, let me tell you what's happening here. The empires, folks, are very much like people, like men. They rise and they fall. And as you read history, you'll find empire after empire comes up, then it drops off and another one comes on the scene of action. Rome is falling into the same place. Rome has risen and she's now on a decline. And the decline that she's on is because there have been Germanic tribes. These ten Germanic tribes have moved in on the Roman Empire and they're breaking it up. There's a Roman emperor at this time by the name of Justinian and Justinian is fighting the Goths, the Germanic tribes, trying to hold them back. He has a general by the name of Belsarius, and Belsarius is fighting these Goths, which are made up of tribes like the Anglo-Saxons, the Franks, the Hurliai, the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, and all these different Germanic tribes. They're fighting them. The Goths have backed Justinian's army clear to the walls of the city of Rome. It looks like they're going to wipe out Justinian's army. Justinian's general, Belsarius, has sent a note to Justinian saying, do something for us. Inside the city of Rome, there is the bishop of Rome. The bishop of Rome's name is Sylvester. Sylvester is a godly man. He loves the Lord. He serves the people. He tries to do that which is right. But he has refused to have any part to do with the war between the Goths and Justinian. So any time Justinian's army got close to the Sea of Rome, Sylvester had the gate shut, would not let him in. If the Goths got close to the city of Rome, he closed the gates would not let them in, refused to have part of it. So they backed Justinian's army clear to the walls of Rome, and he shut the gates, won't let them in. Justinian went to his wife, Queen, who is a Christian. She also happens to be a very close friend of the bishop.